Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRadio.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year, guys. Um, it sounds a little bit strange since we are recording this in November 2021, but nonetheless, I do have a guest here. But before that, I wish you all the best for the new year. It can only get better than the last one. That said, Pavel, how you doing? Hey, Joe, thank you for having me, first of all, and happy new year to all of you. I'm very good to have you all as well. I'm doing great. Thank you. We have to tell the audience this is kind of our kickoff since we're doing a new series with KI Bundesverband, which literally means the German AI Association. And you are our first interview guest. And we thought it would be a good start to kick off the new year with that content. So I'd like to welcome you and welcome the AI. KI Bundesverband, the German AI Association, on board. After we've cleared that out of the way, I've been looking through your LinkedIn profile, as I always do, and I realize you've been doing quite a lot, including being a soccer coach, which I found pretty interesting. Uh, you studied um, with a master in international finance. I do believe you arrived here in Germany and I've seen oh, pretty hard stuff. You did taxes, oh, tax advisory and auditing. Not a fun job, but take us a little bit through your journey and what you learned and how did you end up with an AI startup? Because I do believe from international finance and taxes, it's quite a long stretch to, oh, let's do an AI startup. How did this happen? <laughs> That's quite a journey and I fully understand the question. And I'm happy to tell you about my basic story, but uh, it's probably easier uh, explained than it maybe sounds. So my uh, the crucial path in my career was that I've been for 15 years in top management consulting at Roland Berg and Stan Stewart, both in Munich, both focusing on the restructuring uh, and, and uh, cost optimization programs. And uh, this is also where my journey with Brian started. So I've seen in the life of management consultants and also in corporate headquarters of large and medium corporations that there is so much time and talent wasted with recurring non-core tasks nobody really likes to do. And uh, there are usually technologies and data sources out there being able to help you with these tasks, but the people often don't know these solutions, cannot afford them or just don't trust them because of data security uh, issues. And this is this was the triggering point for me, starting to automate multiple tasks of business professionals uh, in a creative and completely new way. So this is, this is basically uh, the story. I can elaborate about my aha moment a little bit more. Um, for everybody who doesn't know German, we may translate the aha moment, meaning that is the moment you got the insight, like, oh, now I got it in German, we say, aha. <laughs> so exactly. And this, the insight moment was when I've been working with my colleagues on a proposal for a consulting project, and we've been working on the, on the document, and we had just only a few hours left. It was already at night, and we needed a case study for the attachment of the of the proposal and then that uh, it came but it was perfect but in the wrong language and the question was who has the passion and time to translate few slides at night for a proposal which needs to go out in next next day means translating it from german to english and of course you could spend hours with it or you could do copy paste copy paste to a, a machine translation web page and uh, then i thought come on this is such a stupid task to do copy paste, copy paste to website plus is unsecure. Why don't you buy and why don't you build an assistant which knows the best digital services, combines them and make them available to his users? And the idea was to create this kind of digital assistant for business related tasks of business professionals. 
this was the idea. And then I started experimenting with different, uh, different technologies. And the idea was really to use the bot technology as the core technology behind, uh, where I thought if you can, uh, ask bot to deliver you a pizza with uh, salami and and uh, mushrooms you can also uh, order a translation of a document a conversion of a document or the analysis of a company and this was the idea where i started to build on this and it, just just one question in which language was the case study The case study was originally in German and the target language was in English, if I rec remember right. And this was already end of 2017. So sometimes left, but you do these translations all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can tell you a few stories about this and a few nights wasted on that. Um, <laughs> especially if you talk to somebody the next morning uh, who then says, oh, yeah, I got the whole pitch deck in German. He will meet. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, it's, you have this situation all the time, also when the project runs and then you need to talk with the. So yeah. let me translate this. At one point in the future, there will be a smart speaker, uh, with Ask Brian on it. And, uh, it will be in every office of professionals, investment bankers, consultants. And they say, Ask Brian, translate me this. Is this your vision? So it's not my vision. It's reality. <laughs> so. <laughs> And uh, just the only one difference is that, that Brian doesn't work like Alexa and Siri via audio. So he works in written language. So you can write him an email or a Microsoft Teams message and asking him for translating the document on analyzing a company. And it's not in the future. It's right now. So these are the two differences. But my idea and my vision is that Brian in the future will not be only uh, able to perform 20 tasks like he is today, but there will be probably much, much more, including some some customized solutions for big corporates. Uh, I see. And it would have been just great to have uh, this smart speaker, but then I can see really a lot of things going on, uh, stupid jokes going wrong in the office, for example. Uh, <laughs> ask Brian, deliver 100 coffees to this address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, this is also a use case uh, we can think of. So you, you're still thinking about the smart speaker. Okay, I see it. Um, with, yeah, the, the problem, you know, Joe, with smart speaker is you can say translate the presentation from English to German, but you still somehow need to deliver the presentation, the basis for it, right? For some use cases, it makes no sense, but you could, of course, ask the smart speaker if it doesn't disturb your colleagues. Hey, send me the analysis of Siemens and Brian knows your email and your MS Teams ID and sends you the presentation without you typing it down. Yeah, of course, some use cases would work also on the audio. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, I already have a lot of stupid ideas there, but um, basically you're doing this for professionals who are repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly doing the same stuff as we've been talking. For example, here in Germany, translating German, English, English, German. Um, maybe in other countries, translating French, English, English, French. Um, I don't think there is a big need for German presentation in France um, and uh, stuff like this company profiles. And thus, Ask Brian actually make up the stuff as it goes? Or do you really have like a big database of, let's say, corporate profiles of um, translation or you're working with some other translation software in the back? Mm -hmm. So regarding the translations, maybe to address this, uh, our clients are also international corporations which need stuff translated in all the languages of the subsidiary. So this is also a common use case where HR and marketing departments translate training documents and product documentations in other languages. When it comes to the company analysis, we really started like scraping the data out of the internet, but the, the quality was that bad that we said we just, even though we invested months of development time into it, we said we just cannot give or make this skill available in this quality to our users. So we negotiated the big, with, with big data providers and found an agreement with Refinitiv with Thomson Reuters, where Brian gets the information on all publicly traded companies around the world. And we have also a data provider for German companies, for 4 million German companies and negotiating with other partners 
partners to uh, complete the scope that one day Brian will be able to deliver the data on all approximately 400 million companies around the world. Ah, oh, I see. That that would be actually great. Um, What else can ask Ryan do? Because I do see a pretty big use case for late at night. Uh, let's say, assume it's, it's a smart speaker again, and you're sitting there at 2 a.m., all the team is tired but still needs to work a little bit, and uh, the, 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 uh, somebody says, ask Brian, tell us a joke. <laughs> so in fact, jokes was the first skill <laughs> even me as non-tech person was able to build. So the first interaction of Brian was tell me joke and he told you a joke. So as of now, it's not one of the skills we promote, but you can always ask Brian for a joke. And <laughs> so if you look uh, how our customers are currently using Brian, it's uh, leading skill is translation. Second one is the company analysis. Third one are slide graphics because sometimes you need uh, cool templates and icons to pimp up your presentation to make it more attractive. And you would, you probably know yourself how much time you sometimes lose with this kind of annoying stuff that nobody notices and realizes when, when it's done, done properly. And the uh, number four skill uh, would be uh, converting of documents. That means Converting PDF documents, no matter if natively created or, or uh, uh, scanned or photographed into editable formats, into Excel, Word and PowerPoint. You just send a PDF document to Brian and say, hey, make me Word out of it. And in three minutes, you get your document back. So uh, I believe a cool, cool feature as also incorporates in the office wars. Sometimes the department send you PDF uh, documents instead of editable ones, so you, you cannot use it. And Brian can he help you to convert it within three minutes or faster into a format you can work with. Uh huh. The only information I was missing here at what number is the tell me a joke? Ah, at what number? Yeah. So which number to call or how do you? No, 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 uh, number four, number one. Ah, number it's, it's not that frequent. We don't push it, but sometimes people ask for it. I don't know, it would be number 20. So it looks like the job is fun enough or the pe people are too busy for jokes. You know? uh, I assume they're too busy, but still let's assume it's in the top 20. <laughs> Yeah, that's that would be, that's definitely the case. Okay, that is what you guys are right now doing. So basically, I assume your company headquartered in Germany and everything yes. the AI does is also here on service in Germany, talking about data security, especially if you're in a really competitive environment like consulting, you're always concerned, where is my data yes. and can competitors potentially act, yes. um, uh, see it? Get it, get it somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, usually the first question when we present Brian is, does it really work? And the cool thing is everyone can try it immediately. If you go to our website, you can try it immediately and uh, you can see directly after you register for the free trial that it works without any download or something. Yeah. So, and the, really the second question we are always asked is what about data security and privacy? So all our infrastructure is, uh, is hosted in Germany. And uh, we have also an external GDPR uh, uh, agency making sure that we are GDPR compliant and it's all secure and, uh, and, and confident what we do. One of the aspects is also that if our users share their files and content with us, we just save it for the time of processing the task and then delete it after that. Yeah. So that means uh, we have very uh, rigorous processes in, in this field because, as you said, also our clients process sensitive information with Brian and we make it um, absolute secure possible. Ah, I see. Uh, my next question would have been then, if somebody moves from company A to company B, uh, how much can they actually transfer of their account? So um, what we usually have is that uh, you can buy Brian as an individual. Then it's related to your email address, your private email address or your work email address. And then it stays always with you. And the second business model we have is that we say, Brian, answer all the questions from goodspartners.com or all the questions from uh, bcg.com, yeah? And then Brian answers all the uh, emails coming from new uh, employees 
as long as they have their email account. And if you want to take your account with you, then just let us know and we are happy to win a new customer. Yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. So, um, that is the status right now. Basically, you have a handful of skills and, uh, they tailor towards busy professionals and, um, you do it mostly in written form. Um, what, what are you currently working on right now? Is it uh, increasing the skills to get deeper into your audience, your target customer, or is it to broaden your customer base with what you already have? Mm -hmm. So in fact, we are uh, uh, extending Brian basically in three, three direction. It's the skill set. So we are continuing to add new skills. Right. So not just improving the existing skills, like adding additional countries in the scope of uh, company information Brian provides, but it's also adding new skills, which will be valued by our current target groups, but also others. For example, transcribing audio recordings into text uh, in an automated way where you just send uh, your uh, iPhone recording to Brian saying, hey, make me word out of it. So this will, uh, our tar current target group like, but also some other, uh, target groups. So also adding new skills mean extending our target groups. And then also in terms of regions, as of now, we very much focus on Germany, Austria, Switzerland, you could say, but Brian is ready for a global rollout because he can translate, for example, to 100 languages. Yeah. So he's basically ready, uh, to go out. And, and then we are extending Brian is also in a sense that as of now, you can communicate with Brian via email teams. And we are working also then on Slack as the next communication channel, because we want to have Brian where work related communication happens. And we don't want to make it too complicated for the user to have an extra app, extra website and so on. You just don't need nothing. You just need the email address writing to email to Brian or a, a Slack channel, and then you can get the help of Brian. So. Channels, skills, target groups. That sounds pretty much like uh, you need a lot of money. Are you currently having an investor looking for investors or are you guys bootstrapped? So uh, this is a cool question. So we started by bootstrapping, but we see, have seen then that if we want to buy and include good da data and growth rapidly, we need external funds. So we have now already two investment rounds behind us, all with private investors. So no VC involved. And we are searching for the next uh, investors for the next financing round, maybe in the beginning of Q2 2022. That pretty much sounds like it's a Series A or a Series B already? Uh, no, I would say so. Uh, as you said, so it's probably late seed and early Series A. Early Series A, I see. Uh, Q1 2022, everybody who who would like to reach out to you, of course, as always, um, there is a link down in the show notes wherever you're listening to this or watching this, and then you can get to the blog of our um of our episode. The very simple reason is as well in YouTube as in all the podcasting apps, we are limited to, I do believe, 4,000 characters, and that's not sufficient for our show notes. That's why we keep it in one place. And there people can reach out to you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with AI and ask Brian? Because um, I've, I've once watched a little bit TV and there was an AI trained by the US military where it was supposed to spot Russian tanks in the woods. But all, all the um, pictures of the trees without tanks was during sunny weather and everything with the tanks was during cloudy weather. So actually the AI learned to differentiate between trees uh, when it's sunny and when it's cloudy. Did, did you also have something happen like this? <laughs> so you, you you talk about those shortfalls of certain training uh, uh, training data you use for. I know the example of the wolves, right? So usually snow and uh, trees on a 
picture means there is a wolf even though there is no wolf yeah so i know this problem as well and in fact it's like like uh, ai uh, technology is uh, progressing but uh, maybe to give you an idea we are having a look at at multiple ai technologies and selecting only few of them being ready to really help you in business life. So I would say maybe one in 10 solutions were uh, deliver what they promise on a sufficient level. And this is also a big part of what we do. We find the technologies which work and include them in Brian in a, in a simple to use integrated interface. Yeah. So, uh, for example, also converting PDF documents using optical character recognition into editable formatting. So we, ha we have tried multiple technologies and have chosen the, the best ones. And my experience is we know how, how often Brian is wrong, how often he is right, and we keep on improving in him. And uh, it's all right. It's just managing expectations. And I know there is a huge variety in the expectations of our users. Something you need to stick with the default formulation we propose for translating files, but some write, hey, Brian, I hope you are doing uh, having a great day. Uh, it would be great if you could help me by translating this presentation into English. And please don't mind. No problem if it's within two hours. So sometimes the people have these expectations and that expectations. And sometimes the people think Brian is the first brain which can help you with any task you can imagine of so there is a lot of expectation management work we have to do but the amazing thing is that ai is developing extremely rapidly and i think this is also advantage of brian that we help the to close the gap between the stupid work you need to do at work and make the best technologies which really work available at your fingertips ah i see i see, see. I, I hope the answer was not too 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 long, too big <laughs> too long. No, that, uh, that that's totally fine. When I'm thinking, what are you guys doing? It sounds like you have a tech team of like 100 people in the basement sitting. Yeah, it's it's great that the, the perception is like this. So that means I'm I'm selling it right. No, we are a very small team of five plus ten people. So we are five full timer and ten part timer uh, running the whole company. Ah, I see. See, that also sounds like you're always interested in talking to talented uh, coders. Uh, we have currently, uh, yes, talents. We are always searching for for new new persons. But uh, until the next financing round, we are perfectly happy. So I would say that that half of our resources is tech and half is all others. Uh, and of course, then after the next financing round, we will search for for more talent in both areas. So 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 business development and tech, because we want to accelerate the growth of Brian in terms of skills and and his uh, capabilities and uh, availability via multiple channels. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see. 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 And uh, that that also s sounds like you you're going to extend offices, like for example, to North America and get sales running there. So the big plan is um, until end of twenty five, we want to have one million users, and to get there, we probably need to go global. Yeah. So we are starting here in Germany. In fact, we are a post corona company, so we don't uh, have a really a physical office. So we work as a remote team. Uh, but yes, in in the plan, in order to to make it work, I believe you will need locations. And yes, US has a huge market we have in mind. Yeah. I see. I see. Um, what, when you said a uh, 2025, one million customers, what came to mind is the comic Pinky and Brain. What are we going to do tonight, Brain? The same as every night, Pinky. Oh, Conquer the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> I love those two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I ask Brian also do Pinky and Brain? Uh, Brian the Brain sounds a little bit like, like the, the friend of Pinky. Yeah. yeah that, that would be a <laughs> skill I would request at random intervals. It's just that. <laughs> it was just a pleasure talking to you thank you very much uh i had a lot of fun and um fortunately you won't be the last person in our cooperation with the ai with the german ai association and um thank you very much best of luck and let us know how you guys doing thank you joe it was my pleasure and fun yeah That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, share.
Sherry is Carrie.